the approval of the minutes from May. Move to approve and submit it. I have a second? Yep. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? August report. I'm happy to announce that the settlement is finished and we've given you your money. Um, it should be on your report. Um, June 8th, we're going to give these to Barry. Um, but your general property taxes were $499,216.27. And then the one with the dot by part of it is $95,537. Say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried on 206, 207. I'm moved to approve 207 and 208 to Regents Bank, uh, 47, 334, 38, and 107, 265, Uh, 
calls $949.56. Yes, we did. What you put in your stack? Because um, I wasn't sure what that, uh, that you wanted to uh, have that presented. Uh, that's from Jacob Adams and um, with the Carroll County Economic Development Corporation. And it's um, related to preliminary analysis of potential residential tip in Carroll County. Um, it's really the what they paid Baker and Tilly um, for their uh, time spent in analyzing the residential tip. Right. And do you want that as a claim? Yes, please. Um, two or one. This has to be done today, actually, is when the uh, department wants it. So the motion would be to retain all the uh, assessed value? Yes. <coughs> um, specifically, the tax generated from the tax allocation area for 2021 taxes payable in 2022. I move that we retain all the assessed value for the 2001 to 2022 uh, for, for the tax allocation area of the first district. Second. Michelle, second that. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, Barry. If I could get some signature in there. 
As you know, uh, and you just paid WSP, who is handling the appraisals and the um, purchasing of the uh, easements for whether it be temporary or permanent for the um, project on Highway 421. So they want to know if um, if you want to offer minimum amount. They state that the state of Indiana in that when they go through this, they offer a minimum amount of a thousand. Now that may be a little bit too much regarding <coughs> somebody for this project like uh, has a temporary right of way. They're appraised to only, you know, be out couple feet or whatever, only for a temporary yes. construction. And it's like $90. And so they're wondering if um, they should offer a minimum of, of $500 to $50,000, $1,000, $1,500. And then anything that exceeds that minimum it would be the appraised value as determined by the appraiser. Right. Right. Now, there is one um, that well, they're, one they're wanting one. you to act on right now. It's for $11,050. The one partial is $11,050. And that's a permanent? <coughs> yes. Um, a portion of it's temporary, but. Uh, Mostly for now. <laughs> the, the email that Barry sent out to me, I, my suggestion was we make a minimum of 500. And I know there's, there's some partials of us like $90, like he said, but. How many property owners uh, are involved? Five. Yes. There's four on this, but that's not the 11,000. So. Brian, Brian might have it. Brian Fuller with HWC. So far, the appraiser has performed five appraisals. Okay. There's a total of seven property owners affected. So okay. we're still waiting on appraisals for two of them. Um, the, the one in question, the 11,050, is the uh, Jeffrey and Patricia Evans. And basically, the value of land taken is $600. Land improvements is fourteen hundred dollars, and damage damages that would happen is nine thousand. So that's how that eleven thousand five hundred happens. And I think they they put a fence pretty close to the property line, and that's what that's where the main um, amount is. Because, so I have that copy of an appraisal. Um, that's a much larger appraisal than the other ones. The other ones are basically about ten pages. They're simple fee, um, and as Barry said. Some areas were taken literally two feet from them. I mean, it's not, it's, it's very little value, and they won't even notice it, but it's something that we have to, 
is to make sure that's that's right because we're we're learning performance and work on that property. Um, the others are maybe five feet or seven feet. It's, it's kind of like what's the protection. So, as Barry said, uh, when you're using federal funds, you typically end up requires a minimum of thousand dollars, even if the property is worth ten bucks. It's just the way it is. Um, so you're not using any federal funds, but kind of to make sure that it's worth their while to. Go ahead and do it. Um, I just kind of suggest you do some, some type of minimum. Right. Not necessarily, not really required, but it's still good, good practice. So if anybody wants to see those appraisals, I have them. Any questions for Brian on that? saying is that the person that lost two feet lost the same thing as what you know somebody that lost more than that. Right. Can I make a motion to have a minimum of four hundred dollars? Second. Second. Any discussion on it? All in favor say aye. Discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we do have skateboard camps 
around so I can ask them how really we should do it. So. Okay. Could I have some clarification on that? You want to transfer $500,000. Does it go anywhere? Where, yeah, like where do you, do you want it to, your savings? Account? In the savings account. Mm -hmm. I think it's 45000 So it doesn't affect the budget at all? We don't have to have the money in there. It's just appropriated, so it can be spent. So that there would have to be a transfer that would occur back into the account before money can be spent out of it. So it's just appropriating the dollar. They want to get the interest off of it, so it's yeah. probably a good idea. So if you go from 4501 to 4509, I wanted to ask another thing. Do the claims tell me where to pay that, what lines to pay those bills out of? They do not. Yeah, well, yes, they do. I apologize. Yeah. Barry's on the ball. They can ride. That's okay. okay. He might retire into the uh, uh, <laughs> Department of uh, Local Government Finance yeah, or yeah. uh, State Board of Accounts. Yes, sir. Um, no, I'm not saying that they're right. But, I'm not <laughs> <laughs> but um, the more I think about it, the more I think a check should be written and then receive it in. So I will talk to the treasurer on that. And the state board. Thank you. Yeah, four or five in the morning, four or five in the morning. That's right. Yep. Okay. Show me. Show me. Uh, Brian, update on 441. Uh, nothing, nothing specifically. We just need to start buying right away now. Um, we've got a draft set of plans uh, that went out to the utilities last week. Um, so we should be getting comments back from them. We won't be bidding in June, obviously, but we will, we'll, as soon as we get right away purchase, we'll be able to get it out to bid. We've coordinated with NDOT, everything seems to be on schedule. And we'll How long right away will it take to bid right away? Yes. How long? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is not an answer. Ask how long. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> As soon as we can get them to sign the paper, so, and they accept an offer. Thank you. All right, Jake, uh, anything from ABC? Yep, we're going to give you guys an update on where we're at with the wood too. Can you get me one too? You can email it. Okay. Um, so what you have in front of you um, is the preliminary schedule to establishing the housing tip in Carroll County. Uh, we've done a lot of legwork since the last uh, we've discussed. Um, and really, you guys allowing us to have that community conversation helped us realize what the picture looks like, what the need looks like, and have the conversation with the community. So uh, working with um, Rick Hall from Barnes and Thornburg and then Matt Eckerly from Baker Tilly, um, we are, this is the timeline that, that we've, we've established. This would hit every um, regulatory check mark uh, that, is, that is built into the process um, and allow us to proceed forward with it. Uh, the end goal being establishing economic development target areas for housing. Um, we're still under, and I want to obviously have the conversation, we're still under, uh, it is our understanding as a group that, that we would be, this would not be a TIF allocation area, so we would be collecting or we'd be returning any excess uh, back to the political subdivisions if they were in, in the area. Um, and so merely this is just for us to draw lines to so, and that's been the message all along, so that when we meet with these entities, if this is what you guys want to proceed forward with, with your timing, um, that'll be the basis to what we're trying to do. We're establishing economic development target areas for housing. The picture for this is 25 years. So, so when there are target areas identified, um, these will be a kind of a 25 year idea of residential growth. Um, and so that's kind of, how we look at this approach is not just this year or next year or so on and so forth. So, uh, any 
questions about, I mean, I mean ideally we, we'd like to, if, if, if this body's willing, is to move forward with these dates, set these meetings up, um, get public notices out to begin the process of, of adopting the resolutions. Move to approve the timeline set forth by the ARC. Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, on the, the 8 9 meeting, are you going to sit down with what, what's our role in that special meeting? I mean, you, is the RBC the one that has to initiate everything on that at that time? Correct. So, yeah, it'll start with us, it'll start with the body. <coughs> And then I'm in with this body. Um, so yeah, if you were to look at the 8-9 meeting, the 8-9 meeting will be exactly what you guys we have done already. So we basically, when when you guys allowed the EDC to to create that conversation, that's exactly what that step in meeting will be. It be instead instead of being a a concept of an idea, it'll actually be the real thing. It'll actually be the target areas as defined. Um, it'll be in the same similar discussion. We'll do a financial analysis. We'll be able to look at these properties over 25 years. And um, so, to answer your question, Larry, yes, the 8 9 meeting will be exactly what we hosted before, and, and we would be facilitating that. Um, and it will be the same setup, context, things like that, except it will be the real plan um, that we'll be moving forward with. So. Any other questions for Will you be? Proposing an allocation area at that time, so you will have done that much like work uh, leading up to that. Yes, we do have some preliminary mapping now, but we still we still have conversations to be had with local officials on areas. Um, we still have landowners that are identifying property that they would like to develop, maybe in a generational time frame. And so we're we're continuing to be kind of that open conduit right now for those conversations. Um, and, and allowing it, and basically just yes, telling the story of what properties they are and, and, and identifying. So yeah, we, the map is ever changing. I can provide an update on where we where we kind of are now, and and um, and, if, and then kind of move forward from there. So yeah, I, nothing set in stone until we have that official plan, and then it can still even change as we work our way through the process. So we go to schools, we go to Flora, we go to to, to wherever we're going for these approvals. Um, that can sometimes dictate whether we're moving a parcel here or a parcel there. So, um, yes, I, I think that will be, until we get done, this body gets to the very end and approves that kind of final piece, that'll be it. Um, doesn't mean you can't change it or amend it, just as you can now, but uh, merely adopting those target areas. So, it's a good question. So, is the biggest roadblock they have going to be the schools? Uh, one of the roadblocks, I guess I could say. Yeah, I, I think all regulatory pieces to this are going to be, as they are set out to be, a way for us to make sure there's checks and balances to it. So, um, yeah, I think uh, the process, it, it, it appears that it's pretty robust. Everyone, everyone will have an opportunity to voice favor opinion on on this initiative and what we're trying to do. So, yeah, I, I don't, I don't I want to say roadblocks, but more, the, yeah, the, the checks and balances of it, we, we have a lot of, a lot of bodies to, to to come to get approval on this, um, and we're, we're we haven't really everybody seems to be in consensus for the most part that this is something that we need in our community. This is a long-term housing plan. Essentially, we're treating it as such, and uh, and this is uh, this seems to be something everybody is wanting. So obviously, there's concerns, um, and we've tried to handle those as, as as best we can explain or get them to the pe people that can answer those. Anita, I think you want to be up, up, up next. Get your hand up, can you? <laughs> I had my hand out. I didn't say that. <laughs> Was this letter in your packet with the request for? If not, I can. Oh, thanks. So.
So the city of Delphi, um, not quite through the water project, but getting closer, uh, is now um, in pretty dire need of tackling wastewater, as I think Jake can attest. Uh, all of the requests that he sends our way, uh, we routine, routinely bump up against 85% uh, of our wastewater capacity. And uh, that's during a seasonal flow when IPC uh, gets uh, a little bit of additional volume. Um, at 85%, Ivan begins to look at you a little bit more critically and um, the questions start to come up as to you know, how you are going to manage that, that uh, capacity in the future. Uh, we're at a point where uh, if Jake was to get a major, um, well, certainly a food processor, we would have great difficulty in providing uh, wastewater for that. We're okay now on the water side uh, for the foreseeable future, but um, we, we really need to look at uh, expanding the wastewater treatment plant. And so we have engaged Butler, Fairman, and Seifert to do a wastewater system analysis for us. Uh, they'll look both at some short-term um, opportunities to provide some redundancy to the system, and then what we will need to do from, from a, a plant expansion uh, point of view. They're looking at uh, several different options uh, as we get to that long-term need. Uh, the cost of the study is 113300 I believe in the past, the RDC and IPC have shared in the cost of that. Uh, the uh, portion for the RDC then to consider would be $37,667. I have already received um, approval from Indiana Packers Corporation to, uh, to uh, pay for a third of that study, and then of course the city would pay for the other third. Um, so my request is that uh, that you uh, fund um, $37,667 and if approved, Butler, Fairland, and Seifert could uh, direct bill to the RDC for that now. Industrial growth. So, so does that mean that the sec there would be a second site? That's one of the options being considered. So, um, other Fairman and Seifert will look at a couple of options. One would be to, does it make sense to locate a plant uh, closer to the TIF area, if you will, uh, where industry is likely to occur? Uh, what are the issues involved with that? Uh, would we be able to secure uh, an additional permit uh, for that? Um, or would it make more sense to have a pre-treatment facility that then takes it to an expanded uh, wastewater treatment plant where it's currently located? So those are you know, among the options that they will be exploring um, and uh, you know, trying to determine what the best path forward would be. If you're running at 85% capacity now, during the seasonal flow, how can you expand the plant down there to expand it out more? Aren't you kind of limited to what you can do? You can expand that? Or Not really. We do it? have uh, property. Uh, you know, we have room to expand the current plant. Uh, we're looking at short term adding a, an additional clarifier. Um, it won't increase our capacity, but it will give us some redundancy to the system. One of the problems that we now have is that the age on the system and its components means that if we have a, you know, a, a drive or pump break and if the clarifier goes down, 
and we couple that with a major rain event, um, you know, we're looking at uh, you know, trying to keep everything uh, running so that we don't discharge into the creek things that we shouldn't. So the additional clarifier will, uh, one, give us redundancy, and then two, as we expand the wastewater treatment plant down the road, that'll be something that's already in place. So uh, it buys us some redundancy and breathing room for the present as we plan for the future. So there's additional enhancements that uh, could be done that uh, aren't necessarily an expansion of the plant and the physical to some extent, but realize those are short term. Yeah. Uh, long term, you know, to increase capacity significantly, uh, to handle another industry or two plus residential development that, that we're all looking for, um, particularly within the corporate limits. Um, you know, those are those are. I mean, the residential capacity is not a huge load, uh, but you know, we've had two requests this week from. Uh, from uh, the EDC for capacity and um, discharge um, volumes, and we don't have it. You know, so those are things that we can't respond to as a community for you know industries that are, are looking for places to locate. Um, so we are um, kind of behind the eight ball in terms of our planning process on this. And obviously, we've been dealing with other major issues like water, and that's pretty critical as well. But um, you know, once you have the water, it you know it, it has to have a place to go, and the wastewater treatment is is obviously uh, uh, critical not only for uh, future growth, um, but you know if we want economic development and industry to, to move to to this area and into the um, areas that we've identified uh, for uh, shovel-ready uh, projects, uh, we, we have to look at this and we have to be prepared to move forward with it. Uh, one of the things that we're hoping to hit in terms of timelines is that we can get the, you know, the wastewater analysis done now. Um, and get our preliminary engineering reports, then there is uh, capacity. I mean, there are grants now that are available, again, through the CARES Act. Indiana Finance Authority has announced a new round of grants uh, for water and wastewater uh, that would be either a combination of grants and, and loans. Uh, we may be able to hit that for the clarifier and then hoping to have the preliminary engineering reports ready so that if the infrastructure bill uh, passes on a federal level, we can be in line uh, to uh, receive some of that money for our expansion. Uh, so, you know, the timing is, you know, pretty critical as well, not just for the capacity that we need to provide for future uh, industrial and commercial growth, um, but certainly for hitting those financial um, bills that are out there um, that you know, potential to help fund this. Yeah, I, I will say something to the board that uh, I, I attended a number of webinars regarding the ARP money that's coming down the pipe, and the number one thing I hear over and over and over and over from all these folks is plan. Like, they're not just going to throw money at things that you haven't thought about. So, I mean, they're, they're going to require engineering reports, and uh, 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 I do have some questions about what this report generates, but um, I think it's really critical that we look at, uh, maybe not just even this, but in general, if we have ideas for what the future looks like out there, that we start to get those planning uh, dollars put together because, you know, there's hundreds of billions of dollars coming down the pike, but prerequisite for all of this planning. That's comprehensive planning, engineer, pre-engineering, engineering, all those kinds of things. Makes a big difference in, in how those uh, opportunities are scored by the government. Uh, my question to you, Anita, is what's the timeline of the of the 
deliverables and what specifically are the deliverables from BFNS? So the timeline is um, within the next month or two for the, uh, the short term, which is the clarifier, in fact, we have a call tomorrow morning uh, to discuss that. Um, and then for the, um, the options that, that I mentioned by the end of the year. So, um, and hopefully, you know, more, more quickly than that. So that will outline, present at least two options, one for um, the uh, location of um, basically a second plant or pretreatment plant uh, closer to the Kutcher um, Heartland Industrial Park uh, versus uh, expansion um, at the existing plant. What is the uh, status, just changing gears a little bit on the water project? I mean, percentage completion, what are your status? Right, we are still um, in the, still uh, working through phase two of the water project. Um, what we're now working on, which is pretty exciting, is that we're taking the hilltop um, tank down. Um, as uh, Pat and others know, those tanks have basically never been maintained or serviced because you couldn't take one offline because uh, there was no redundancy in the system. And um, so Hilltop is the first tank, the other uh, two, um, Deer Creek and uh, uh, the Armory Road tank will be serviced this year as well. And um, so by probably by the end of summer, we will be wrapping up. The booster station is up and running. That's why we can take a tank offline. Uh, the pumps are holding the pressure in the system, and uh, it's pretty exciting to, you know, to see everything uh, coming along, as it were. So um, that's that's pretty much where we are. We're, we still have uh, some uh, guaranteed savings left out of the project, and we're trying to identify some uh, some opportunities to uh, to uh, do water-related projects that will save us from maintenance in the future. So in, the, in terms of deliverables, um, will it, is it, will it, do you have a cost estimate and an engineer plan? Yes, and an engineering okay. cost estimate as well okay. on the options. My question is, you're wanting us to commit to one third now in the survey, and then you're gonna come back with, when you get the cost down, you're gonna ask for one third from us? I don't know. Um, have we done that in the past? Gosh, I can't imagine. Um, I don't know if it's going to be in the TIF uh, district, and we might ask for 100%. Who knows? Uh, Larry, I don't know at this point. I think, uh, obviously, uh, if it is something that will uh, benefit primarily industry coming into the TIF area, then obviously we would hope for participation. But until we know, more about what the recommendations are and what the cost estimates are. Um, certainly we would hope that there would be some shared um, share in the cost, but we're also, you know, maybe what we would be looking for would be some match towards grants, which would be, um, you know, the, the ultimate goal <coughs> would be to try to capture uh, some of the uh, federal funding that would be coming through on, on infrastructure. So. I just got one quick question. What is your average capacity? Where are you at on your average capacity? You've given us the peak. It's rain season. So where are you running, say, on a day-to-day -day average across the year? So on a day-to-day -day average, we're probably at about 75%. 75, okay. So, so you don't have that much infiltration? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's, you know, we've, I've sat on this tour probably the main period here, so we were here the last expansion. Larry, were you here? That was 12, 15 years ago, or whatever. Yeah. 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 yeah, so uh, we've seen this go over and over again. It's, it means we're growing. It's where we right. need to be, so right. we need help where we can, I think. Mike, I guess, when I sit back in, I, I, I look at this and I go, the survey's fine, but if you're going to tell me we're looking at updating or 
moving, keeping everything down below where it's at today, I'm saying in 50 years, if we have industrial growth, we have residential growth in the county, at some point in time, there's going to have to be a new sewage plant put in. Mm -hmm. So And that may be now. But and we don't now, if we're going to do it, let's, let's, let's do it now, because we know what the cost is now, but we don't know what the cost is going to be 10, 15, 20 years from now. There's, there's also, though, the issue of permitting and, um, you know, what item will allow us to do. Uh, so that's, that's, a, a, that's a large part of this study, and it's one of the things that they'll be exploring up front. So, um, you know, I, I understand what you're saying, and I don't disagree with it. You know, we have a plant that is old.